Hey, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's thrilling to be with you. It's even more thrilling that we have two excellent uh, presenters on tap tonight. So I'll go ahead and uh, um, so, since we want to re be respectful of your time, I'll go ahead and introduce our, our two presenters tonight. Um, the first one will be our, our assistant governor, trainer, and budget and finance committee chair, Eric Storberg from the uh, Rotary Club of South Shore, Staten Island. Give Eric a big round of applause. Um, Eric will be talking on running your um, clubs now, talking about the environment that we're working in post-COVID, meeting online, and some of the implications of that. Um, as many of you know, Eric is a multi-certified financial advisor with Ameriprise Financial Services. Um, our our second presenter is the awesome S District Governor, Nikki Medeiros, from our neighbors in um, 7490, District 7490. Uh, she's also our Regional Public Image Coordinator, or RPIC, another uh, great Rotary acronym. Uh, she's a member of the North Hudson Rotary Club and uh, is the, uh, I'm gonna get her exact title here, Director of External Affairs at the Palisades Medical Center in North Burke, New Jersey. So welcome, Eric. Welcome, Nikki and Eric. I will turn the show over to you. All righty. Well, thank you, Governor Mary. And thank you, everybody, for attending tonight. Good evening. Uh, welcome to the first of Rotary District 7230's District University Series. Again, my name is Eric Storberg, and I have the honor of kicking off this program. Uh, Again, just to uh, reiterate what Governor Mary said, uh, I've been fortunate and honored to be named a district trainer as well as the chair of the District Budget and Finance Committee. And I take those jobs very seriously. And again, I'm, I'm happy that Governor Mary asked me to speak on running your club now. So we are living through unprecedented times. We who are connected to Rotary, including Rotary International itself, have not been spared of the trials and tribulations of this coronavirus. As a result, Rotary International has taken the position that, quote, the health and safety of all participants in Rotary programs, meetings, and events is of paramount importance, unquote. Rotary has had to cancel for the very first time in history the international convention, which was going to be held in Hawaii. They've also suspended sending president's reps for this Rotary year, just in case uh, Governor Mary missed that. Sorry, Mary. Uh, they also state that no in-person meeting or events shall be mandatory for any Rotary participant who may feel uncomfortable attending because of the pandemic. They also stated that all conveners and organizers of Rotary meetings are strongly encouraged to consider all health concerns in deciding whether to hold in-person meetings, and also that all RI board and committee meetings shall be conducted virtually and not in person for the remainder of calendar year 2020. So obviously it's very important that we address the topic of virtual meetings as it doesn't look as though this pandemic is going to end anytime soon. So we should start embracing the technology we have available if we haven't already. So where do we start? Well, we're gonna start with the boring part. You know, we'll get that out of the way and that's basically talking a little bit about Zoom. So by now you've heard of Zoom meetings and their capabilities, as you know, we're on a Zoom call right now. So chances are that I'm preaching to the choir. However, there may be a few of you though who are in clubs that have not yet embraced or implemented a virtual meeting program. It's no wonder that in just a few short months, Zoom subscriptions have gone from 10 million to over 200 million subscribers. They're the go-to virtual meeting source. There may be other providers that offer similar services, but the combination of low cost and high meeting attendee capacity make them hard to beat. You can sign up for a Zoom meeting for free, actually. You could sign up, have your own account, and it would be for free, but you're limited to uh, 40 minutes, which probably wouldn't help most of your meetings. But for only $14.99 a month, you can sign up for Zoom. You can have 24 hour uh, meetings. I mean, for instance, my presentation is only 12 hours. So, um, you know, settle in. And you can have up to 100 attendees in a meeting. So again, that's only $14.99 a month. So that could be money very well worth spending. So some of the best practices for virtual meetings, and by the way, I, I would ask if you have any 
uh, thoughts and ideas and experiences that you have that might add to any of the things that are going to be saying, be it uh, best practices, for virtual meetings, or uh, keeping members engaged or serving our community remotely, please uh, feel free to let, let uh, those, you know, let your thoughts be known. Uh, we'd love to have you comment on anything, Ed, uh, to anything that I might say here, because you know, we certainly don't have uh, time to cover everything, even though I'm going 12 hours. Uh, so the first uh, thing to consider when, uh, you know, as far as best practices go, consider appointing a virtual meeting coordinator. That would be the person who you sign up with Zoom to run your meetings, okay? Obviously prepare, test your setup, adjust your indoor lighting and camera angle to make sure you're properly lit, check what's in your background. You may not want your viewers to see your liquor collection or dirty laundry. Uh, you can download virtual ground, uh, backgrounds from online sources, uh, including Rotary itself. If you want the Rotary wheel, you want the, uh, the Rotary uh, emblems, if you want anything that has anything to do with Rotary, they have it available for you. And if you don't want to go the rotary way, um, I've been uh, on Mars on some of my calls. I've been on the moon, and socially distancing, and I've even attended meetings from the Simpsons living room on some of my calls. So you might as well have some fun while you're, uh, while you're attending Zoom meetings. Uh, I would also encourage you to set an agenda just like you would in person. Make your virtual meeting concise and engaging. You know, my club, the South Shore Club on Staten Island, sorry, we have, my light here is on a timer. Uh, the South Shore Club, we run our meetings exactly well, like we would if we were doing things in person. We have the prayer, we have the song, we have the four-way test, right? We have our guest speakers, we do sunshine. Uh, we do everything that we would normally do with any other meeting. The only thing is we're providing our own lunch. So you can have a si very similar experience, uh, you know, as long as you have a, a good agenda and, and everything's lined up. Uh, of course, I would encourage you all to uh, stay muted unless you have something to say. We've all been on those calls when you hear the annoying background noise and you can't hear the speaker speak. And uh, you might want to consider a headphone or external microphone, depending on your device. Some laptops can have poor sound. They're not known for having great sound. So again, you can fix that problem easily also. In doing some of my research, I discovered that some people have what's called a Zoom shirt. You might find this interesting. In fact, you could read up on it on the, in the New York Times. There are people that wear the same shirt, meeting after meeting. I was reading about one person, he's in fashion. He, has, he owns 210 shirts, but he's worn the same shirt for 70 meetings in a row because it works and, uh, and it's handy and nobody's noticed and nobody's cared. So keep your shirt handy, keep your Zoom shirt handy. So if anybody has any other ideas they'd like to uh, add, uh, feel free, put them in the chat room and we'll, and we'll get you on. Another question is how can we keep now, our members engaged online. Well, one thing you could do is consider shortening the length of your meeting to allow members to what we would call tune in. You know, we've probably all noticed members when we're on a Zoom meeting and we could see the whole uh, ensemble, you know, who's not looking at the computer, who looks like they're looking at their phone. If you keep, if you keep your meetings short and interesting, they'll be much more involved in the meetings that you're holding. Uh, keep the getting to know you type activities in your meetings, like in my club's case, you know, sunshine, where everybody has a chance to, uh, you know, say a couple words, good, bad, or indifferent. And normally it would be a fundraiser, but now we just do it virtually. And of course, keep your guest speakers. It's probably safe to say now that getting a guest speaker might be easier than ever. I mean, before, if you wanted a guest speaker, they might have to take two to three hours out of their day. They have to get to your meeting, they have to hang out for your meeting, then they got to get back to their office to do a 15 or 20 minute talk. Now they can, you know, you tell them when they're gonna be on, they're on, they do it from the comfort of their office or their home, and then they're off in 15 minutes and it should be easier than ever to get a guest speaker. You should also consider using social media tools to continue uh, your meetings in a sense after the meetings are over. I mean, why not post some of the conversations that you might've had at your meeting? Why not post videos? Why not post videos of some of your guest speakers? Um, and you just, I mean, we might as well use the technology that we have. Why not have photo contests? Uh, my club, for instance, was going to have, you know, a name, you know, who's that baby contest. We ended up not having it, but maybe we should, where we can post all of our baby pictures and everybody was supposed to try to guess who is the baby. And that was going to be a fundraiser. There's no reason why we can't do that. We could do it on Facebook. So, I mean, the possibilities are endless. Uh, if you have members with interesting hobbies, you could consider 
sharing self-recorded videos online, post them on Facebook again. The more interesting your club might uh, look, the more interesting your members might look, the more possibility you might have of gaining new members for your club. And again, if anybody has other ideas, feel free to let us know in the chat and we'll get you on. Now the question is, how can we serve our community remotely? Well, the most obvious answer, of course, is to write a check. Uh, but to write a check, maybe you need to do a fundraiser. And I discovered that on May 2nd, more than 65,000 people watched a virtual telethon called Rotary Response, which raised more than a half million dollars for emergency COVID relief. Well, you don't have to get 65,000 people online and you don't have to raise a half million dollars. You could do like the North Shore Rotary does on Staten Island. Every Friday night, they have a bingo. You can log in, $10 a card, you buy as many or as few as you want. They sell raffle tickets, $5 each, as many as or as few as you want. And people are having fun and they're raising money for charity. And it's something you can count on every Friday night online. So it could be as simple as that. Uh, to help the community remotely, you can also consider global grants as a way to make an impact on the community. If medical equipment is needed in order to respond effectively to COVID-19, global grants can help pay for these items. The foundation is waiving a 30% foreign financing requirement for any new global grant that addresses COVID-19. Just remember that these grants still require uh, both a host and an international partner. Uh, another way to help the community remotely, sorry about that light, is maybe you want to pick a charity every week. Pick a charity that you can highlight both online uh, on your club's web, uh, Facebook page maybe and maybe your individual clubs. Maybe it's a hospital you want to call attention to. Maybe that'll earn the more volunteers and more donations. Uh, you could choose a different charity each week. And uh, you could even include the Rotary Foundation. Membership is always a topic that uh, needs attention. I mean, it, it doesn't matter what Rotary International president is and what year, membership is always critical. You know, for years, we've been sitting at 1.2 million members around the world. We gain 200,000 members, but we lose 200,000 members. And then usually most years, the incoming president of Rotary International says, well, we need to raise, you know, we need 100,000 new members this year. Uh, well, our new president, President Holder Knack, has taken a different approach. He said, let's just grow membership organically. Let's hang on to the members we have. Let's look for members that are a good fit to our clubs because not every potential member would be a good fit with every club, right? So he says, look for clubs that would be a good fit for your club, get them in and also look for more minorities, uh, try to get more women, feels that we're, we're short in women also. And he wants to see more women in leadership positions. And the good thing is these membership goals can be reached virtually. As Holger uh, Kanak said, there is no wrong age to become a Rotarian. He also said that every age can contribute to Rotary. And if we want to find younger members, we're going to have to find them online. So this actually could be the perfect opportunity. You know, why not invite them to our virtual meetings? They may decide to stay when we resume our meetings in person. Uh, now, it wasn't Rotary that I invited a couple clients to. I'm actually a member of a political club uh, on Staten Island but I have two clients that have uh, attended meetings virtually and I'm pretty much assured that they will be attending uh, these meetings once we meet in person. So if it could work for that, it could certainly work for Rotary. Another good uh, opportunity, and you might get members back, or former members. You know, Some of you may remember our past district governor, Jill DeCherifisi. Well, she lives in Florida now with Bill Rossinello, who's uh, a former member of my club. Well, since we've been meeting online, the two of them have been tuning into my club's meetings. So you never know. They may join uh, a club down in Vero Beach, Florida. You never know. Uh, but at least we're getting people back. And I've heard there's other clubs that are having former members also tune into their virtual meetings also. So don't ignore that opportunity. And uh, what President uh, Holger said was that, you know, we could end up stronger because of this crisis. And I believe it. So the theme, the theme for this year was Rotary opens opportunities. As President Kanak said, Rotary is not just a club that you join. It's an invitation to endless opportunities. It says, we believe in creating opportunities for others and for ourselves. 
We believe that our acts of service, large and small, generate opportunities for people who need our help and that Rotary op uh, opens opportunities for us to live a richer, more meaningful life with friends around the world based on our core values. So I'd like to think that Rotary opens opportunities virtually now. So in closing, um, I'm not gonna pretend that we're reinventing the wheel for sure. Uh, Rotary, their very, Rotary's very first virtual club is called the Rotary E-Club One. They're based in Colorado. They have members in 13 countries. Their meetings every week have anywhere from 85 to 95 members. And they've implemented more than 20 service projects over the last 12 months. And some were planned while they were in response to the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, they provided food to Mexico and India. They've delivered face masks to nursing homes and hospices. They've implemented projects for clean water, education of children, training of women, and, and they've also sponsored orphans and students. So I'd like to say that we're limited only by our imagination. Uh, there are some great resources uh, on Rotary. Uh, on the, um, there's a wealth of information on holding online meetings on the Rotary Learning Center. So if you go on uh, myrotary.org, you can find a lot of information and you can kind of pick up where I've left off. So I'm going to thank you all for your time and uh, turn the floor back to our governor, Mary. I'm unmuting and unvideoing, uh, or unmuting my video and audio. Thank you so much, Eric. And it, at the end of the presentation, I'm going to show you on the Learning Center where those great resources on um, online meetings are located. Um, so does anybody have further questions for Eric? Uh, please uh, feel free to put them in the chat. Uh, just looking through, Cecily, do you- There's um, one question about a California club. Um, would like to visit them online um, from Richard. Richard, we'll get you that information on the club that you're looking for. And I believe there is actually a great list of online meetings that was started in Australia that's um, circling, uh, circulating around the Rotary world. And it's yes, um, really I will share the link. I will share it, sorry to interrupt me. I will share the link in the chat for everybody Rotary Club of Mount Lawley, Australia created a database of over 300 clubs at this point. So I'll pop the link in the chat for everyone. And in case you didn't know this, and Rotary Global Rewards is an awesome, awesome thing that we should take more advantage of. There is a 20% discount for Zoom available on Rotary Global Rewards. And I'll put that um, link in the chat as well. Um, all right, our pick, Mickey, are you ready to uh, roll? I am ready. So I'll start off. Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here tonight. And thank you so much, Mary and Cecily, for um, having me on. Uh, the past three and a half months have not been easy. I work in healthcare and um, it's nice to spend time with fellow Rotarians. Um, Rotary to me has always been my sanctuary. So I am very happy to be here tonight. Uh, my topic of course for Rotary uh, is going to be the Rotary brand. And there's a few slides I wanna go over with you. Uh, so that way we uh, can look back a little bit about how branding started with Rotary. And then we're gonna move into a little bit about accessing some of the um, actual Wait, it's loading up now. Uh, some of our um, ideals. Let's see. Don't we love technology? It's great. Just reloading, We're, bear with us one moment, the joys of technology. You know, 
good thing we have technology. Imagine now if we didn't, especially with what we're going through. So we're so happy that at least we have Zoom and blue jeans and go to meeting and all these other fun technology. There we go. I think you started, okay. There we go. If it takes two, there we go. Okay. Okay, so. Bring you back to the first one, Nick. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. So here's our rotary brand. Um, so again, I wanted to give you a little bit of uh, a historical value on it. Uh, next. Okay, great. So now a major worldwide research project was conducted in 2011 uh, to measure the level of knowledge and understanding about Rotary. And at the time, four in 10 people had never heard of Rotary. Um, as a result, Rotary International launched its new branding and messaging, including a new logo and templates. These are all based on identity elements in Rotary voice and visual identity guidelines. A follow-up study was conducted in 2015, and the good news is that we increased the level of awareness by 75%. Next. So when we ask members to describe Rotary, of course, that is our passion. This is what they said. They said words like service, friendship, fellowship. For us, it's easy to describe Rotary because we appreciate and understand the value and, of course, the mission of it. Next. But when we ask the public, we get different answers. Often public perceptions are based on a lack of information and half truths. According to a survey done in 2018, that's just two years ago, some people had an understanding of Rotary, but many people had misconceptions, such as Rotary is an organization for people who are not like me, Rotary are for older men, who are at a different educational and professional levels than I am. Rotary is an exclusive, a lunch club, and not a service club. And that's from the Global Awareness and Understanding Research back in 2018. Next. So by increasing public's, uh, people's understanding of what Rotary is and what we do in our communities, we can lead them to an interest and engagement and a commitment leading to an advocacy for Rotary. We are our best advocates, especially for Rotary. Next. So we come to constant branding. Consistent branding is technically uh, the most important thing we can possibly do for Rotary. Uh, through it, of course, we can increase community and members involvement in our service projects, our fundraisers, strengthen our existing clubs through member engagement. Remember, recognition, trust, uh, protection, recruitment uh, will open more opportunities. But you are what you say you are when you are your brand. Your brand is your word. And that's what Rotary represents. Next. Cecily, next. We, we didn't get stuck, okay. Uh, so you are all brand ambassadors, okay? Uh, you embody the product in appearance, demeanor, values, ethics, beliefs. So the bottom line, you are the advocate who publicly supports and recommends a positive message. A message that's simple, concise, and consistent. One brand, one logo, the whole world in compliance. The major secret is the best branding works without the viewer ever knowing you are promoting you are prom what you are promoting it's engaging and it captures your audience so again you go right back to what marketing is all about and this is how we want to be able to brand the uh actual logo and our the consistency of what our organization represents next but where do we start next so you're welcome to Brand Center. And I know a lot of you have been logging on and um, you're sometimes a little bit confused. I know I still get confused because sometimes they're making a lot of changes. I think the best thing to do is when you get on, you go to rotary.org, you go to my rotary, you go to news and media, 
And then of course you get to the brand center and this is what the brand center looks like. And as you see, you see people of action, right? Join leaders, exchange ideas, and you take action. Uh, the first step of course is to go in and be able to, believe it or not, maneuver it a little bit. When you go into our story, when you go into guidelines or your logos or your materials, you can actually build anything you want for your club. You can actually uh, manipulate the system in order to be able to be as beneficial as possible for your club itself. Um, and you can go into uh, templates, materials to customize your club's activities, promotional items like flyers, brochures, press releases, ads, and videos. Uh, the best advice I could give you is log on and explore. It's the best way to familiarize yourself with the materials offered and it's all for free. Next. And when you're accessing, of course, the um, brand center, you should really go into our story. Sometimes that title changes just a little, but it's definitely the first block as you go right after the wheel. On the bottom, you'll see voice and visual identity. And I've actually sent a PDF and, uh, to Cecily. She has it, and she can send it out to you. The voice and visual identity guidelines, pretty big. It's about 60 pages. So instead of downloading it, you can just get it as a PDF. It gives you everything that you need to be able to make your brand or be able to follow the guidelines for it. Next. And this is a perfect um, sample. Uh, it's updated, of course, in January, and it gives you everything that you need to be able to make it. As you see, our wheels are there, all the different kinds of fonts you can use, all the different colorings you can use, pictures you can adapt, to anything in your club to be able to make it your own. Uh, the only thing they do say is do not manipulate the colors. It's like we all have or work for a business and it's the exact same thing. If we manipulate the colors or manipulate the wheel or the status of the wheel, we've technically for, foregone our logo. So we don't want to do that. Um, next. And as you see, whenever you do use our rotary, you're gonna see our rotary and you're gonna see our wheel. We no longer use the blue and yellow wheel. And it's been since 2011. Um, you never also use the wheel by itself or rotary by itself. You make sure that they're always together. Um, and as you see at the bottom, you have samples with rotary, club of or at and the location. Uh, the Rotary for Rotary International, and of course, our foundation one too. Next. And bring our brand to life checklist. Um, now, I don't want to say that we all have to run out and everything that we've done for our clubs, whether it's signs, posters, uh, pop-up banners, should completely be um, discarded and you start all over again because it could be expensive. I mean, let's let's think about it. But if you're doing more brochures or flyers or anything else, event merchandising or recruitment materials, you need to make sure that you have um, the exact logo that you need. Hold on one second. Sorry, everyone, I'm on call. So when this little phone goes off, I got to go. So now that we have a common understanding of the Rotary brand and why it is important and where to find the information, now we can talk a little bit about the brand and tell the people of action uh, and our stories to the world. Next. So what is people of action? Technically, it's our story. But how you tell that story is the important part. Um, whenever you have, and, and I know we see our clubs sometimes, they'll, they'll uh, have a picture with someone presenting a check or standing behind a podium. But we never tell the story of how that check was administered or what was the impact or the people actually working at the project or in the community and actually go back to our sponsors or back to our community partners 
and give them an overview of what happened and this is the impact that happened. I think we need to do a little bit more of that um, and also feature more of our members. Our members um, like to make sure that uh, they are, um, that they're not only um, accounted for, but that they are valued. And it's important to value our members. Um, so again, it answers what is Rotary, who are Rotarians, what's our impact, and how and why we make a difference. And that's the impact that we're making now, especially now in the community. Next. So again, when you go back to People of Action, you're at the Brand Center, and you're gonna go right at the bottom over to the left-hand side, you'll see People of Action. From there, you can download anything you can possibly uh, need to be able to make um, any kind of flyers. There are toolkits in there, and there is special materials to be able to make from flyers to um, any kind of announcements that you want or anything that you want to put together. Next. <laughs> and of course, when you go into the People of Actions, you click on the View for Resources. It links to the Find the Tips and the Tools and our pre-created materials that you can use on your website or your social media, radio, TV, or whatever you need it. Uh, the latest materials also include scripts for radio and TV ads, billboard and banner images, and even outdoor transit shelters. Next. <clears throat> okay, so as we're leveraging through our digital media, once you have your file, you can upload to your website, your Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram, just like you do any of the pictures. Uh, the headline, of course, as you see, Together We, and then, of course, Mentor. You have to use any predefined action verbs that are approved by Rotary. Uh, provide proof, statistics, impact, no more than a couple of sentences, but describe the action. Uh, and use numbers for credibility. And with, that's what people of action do. Uh, add a clear call to action, add a consistent logo, and include a brand promise. Next. And in fact, this is for, uh, you should also have some screenwriters. There are many people who are visually impaired and use screen readers. Um, and it, an, an, an unhelpful caption would be, people build houses. Captions should describe what the image is conveying for the people who are screen readers. So this one's like the Rotary Club of Seattle focused on building 400 square feet tiny houses to provide shelter and stability for the homeless. So you're giving them not only the visual, but you're giving them the impact of what happened. Um, and especially for the visually impaired, this is a very important asset to them when they are actually being part of our uh, reading or part of our community. Next. And as you see, materials that you can imagine is inside Brand Center. Everything from people of action campaign guidelines to style guides to um, telling your story in five questions to answer. So it's really all broken down for you. All you really need, need to do, I say, is go on, explore Brand Central, have fun with it. Um, and make it your own. You have to make it your own. That's definitely part of marketing. Next. And social media. Uh, we like to say that we need to pick what best fits your um, community. Uh, it captures your audience. But don't forget to use the ones that are your own resources. Uh, right now, there are 3.8 million people on social media on a daily basis. I know the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning, I know it sounds crazy. I check my accounts and then I go right into Facebook, even before I go take my shower. Uh, because I need to know what's happening in the world and I need to know what's happening with everybody else too. So definitely social media. Uh, and here, of course, strengthening your Rotary Club um, not only appoint a public image team or tell a consistent story or use the tools in Brand Center, but you also want to try to get or appoint a webmaster. Uh, you also should appoint a photographer, uh, a storyteller, someone who really writes well in, in your club can all become what I call a social media uh, a team or enhancing your public imaging. Uh, next. 
<clears throat> and the the tips and uh, the tips and tricks. Uh, update your club's logo to match your master branding. Uh, strong social media connections. Don't just go by the most popular. Go what's really important or how you feel most connected in your community. Uh, when to post and how often. I wrote uh, an article. I can send it to Cecily too to send it to everyone. Uh, when to post Facebook on what days of the week. When to post on Twitter. When to post on Instagram. That will get the most attention of your advertisement or of your flyer or of your fundraiser. It will tell you exactly the dates and the times that people are mainly looking at social media. Shout out to other clubs. You know, you have other clubs that are right around the corner from you. Uh, and it's good to collaborate with them to make sure that, again, you're, you're, you're bringing the message to your community. Uh, thank you to your event sponsors. Listen, my community partners are the most important people right now in my community because without them, we couldn't have gotten through the past four months. Uh, so a little note of thank you or a shout out to them in social media, it's always appreciated. And revisit all projects and sponsors. And what I mean by that is that something that really worked well last year or the year before could actually be reinvented and say, you know what, we had such a good time two years ago, we may have to reformat it now because of what's happening in the community. But you know what, it was successful, revisit that again. Next. And of course, trust our worldwide brand, Rotary International. A signature color can be boosted and recognition by 80%. And one third, 33% of the top 100 brands use the color blue in their logo. Uh, blue is transparency and means trust. And although consumers form a first impression of a brand's logo within 10 seconds, it takes five to seven impressions for consumers to remember the logo. Consistent brand presentation across all platforms increases revenue by 23%. And the next slide is one of my very favorites, and I leave you with that. Together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe and in our communities and in ourselves. Together people create change. And that has to be one of my very favorite slides. And the next slide gives you actually all our information from not only myself, but also my assistant RPICs in the area. So we're here to help. Anything we can do for you or we can guide you, please feel free to either contact me or contact Cecily or our district governor, Mary, and they'll be able to get you in touch with us. Thank you so much. Any questions, Cecily, have come up? Hey, hold on, we're gonna stop here. Okay. Hmm. And I can breathe. Okay. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Anyone have any questions, please throw them in the chat box. Um, we will be sending out to the district a copy of the information that Nikki's talked about. So y'all will get a copy of her slides and the brand guidelines. Any further questions for any of our panelists, um, Cecily or me? And before, before we go, I want to quickly share my screen and show you on the My Rotary website, which you should all have accounts for, where to find the Learning Center, the Brand Center. So hang on just a second. I'm going to share my screen. if I can maximize this a little bit. So this is the landing page for my uh, Rotary. You'll see the lovely photo of the Canucks. And then across the top, I'm gonna scoot this over just a little bit. Um, you'll see a number of navigation bars. This is called a ribbon in tech speak. So under learning and reference, you're gonna see a link right over there to the learning center. So that's where you'll find all the great content on the Learning Center, including the online meeting channel. Under news and media, you're gonna see links here to the Media Center, Rotary Video, which we did not talk about this evening, and there you have the Brand Center, and I'll pull that up. Now this is taking you to a separate um, web address. So here is the Brand Center, as Nikki was showing us, 
and across the top it has its own set of ribbons and Mary, uh, I just wanted to bring up you see where it says our image matters it used to be our story so as you see they've updated that too now And over here, you'll see identity at a glance, voice and digital identity guidelines, the messaging guide, quick start guide for club websites. So there's a lot of very, very valuable content that Rotary has put together for all of us. So th these are our uh, dues dollars at work. Questions about any of this? One. All right. Uh, uh, is that, is there that was bad? one question on the Q&A. I'm sorry, Mary. Uh, it came in on the Q&A, not the chat. Uh, does Rotary provide or sell branded stationery? Um, Russell Hampton does have some stationery and some other licensed Rotary providers. However, you can take Rotary's branded material and make your own stationery. I use the Canva, C-A-N-V-A, online graphics program, which is amazing. And I just make sure I use Rotary guideline logos, colors, etc. cetera. But by, I follow the visual guidelines and I've made appropriate postcards and stuff that we've used for district events as well as zona events. Nice. Um, is another question about Rotaract branding and identity. Um, there are Rotaract logos. Um, I don't know, Nikki, if you can speak to anything else about Rotaract branding. I know they're download Rotaract templates, but what else is out there? Uh, the best, the, the branding for Rotaract is a little different. Uh, when it comes to the logo itself, of course, you know, it just formats a little. You still have your wheel, but there is one that's specifically done for rotor actors. But when you go into, I'm not sure if it's the logos or materials, one of the two, it will actually bring out the logos that you have for that specific. Because I think they also have one for Ryla, the rotor, all the, all the uh, youth services. So they do have the specific ones for it. But again, like I said before, the best thing to do, there you go, see? When you can, uh, go down a little, if you can, there's Rotaract, there's Interact, Ro see what I mean? So they have different kinds of um, logos specifically for that. And the beauty of what I've noticed, especially when you're using a certain uh, paper, uh, you don't have to just stick to the yellow. As you see, look at the rotor actor. It's like a purplish. As long as you stay within the palettes that the guidelines are giving you and do not deviate from those palettes, you're fine to use it. Thank you, Nikki. We have two other questions in the chat box for you. One, how should Rotary relate to other organizations in the community while maintaining its identity and brand? Collaborating partnerships. Um, I, I always say this to people. I think that everybody needs to do what they call a community assessment because communities change every three to four years. But having partnerships within the community that you're serving and meeting their needs and collaborating into uh, specific um, programs or specific needs for your community, it's the best way to do it. Uh, you need to become part of them in order for them to participate with you. That's great. Thank you, Nikki. Um, also, to, for, the, for the Rotor Actor Vincenzo, I'm going to ask one of my zone compatriots, Reed Ayer, who um, formed Rotor Act Canada's MDAO. Um, he may have some more information on resources of what Rotor actors have used, in addition to the approved logo, ways they're able to brand themselves correctly, um, that tools that are out there. So I will see if I can get that answer for you guys. And uh, before we leave, I will put the uh, community assessment tool link in the chat. So that we'll, we'll have that. That's another great Rotary resource.
Great. Do we have any other questions from anybody? Um, any of the links we've been talking about tonight, they're going into the chat, but we will also put them on the email follow-up that goes out to the district. So you guys will be able to walk away tonight with all the necessary info. All right. Okay, there's the link for community assessment tools. Um, so panelists, are we ready to ring class dismissed? Ready. I all think right. they all graduated. So that's yes, a good Congratulations. Thing. Congratulations. Um, thank you, thank you panelists. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Cecily. Um, Thank you to those attending, most especially. And I'll, I'll give you a little preview of some news that we'll have when the books are closed for 2019, 2020. But it looks like there was an overwhelming response to our matching points campaign. Um, I can tell you for sure, it is north of $25,000 that we raised in the month of June. Uh, my heartfelt thanks to all of those of you who participated and we're gonna work on getting you your matching points within the next uh, 15 to 30 days once uh, the year end uh, magic dust settles. So thanks everybody. Have a great start, uh, our great Tuesday evening and uh, see you next uh, Tuesday, 7.30. Cecily's gonna be talking about um, online virtual fundraising. So it should be a great session. Great. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night.